Hey guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. This is my Whip It Wednesday where I'm going to show you whatever I've been working on in the craft room this week. Last Friday's tutorial was the little tiny boxy bag where you can hook it onto your keychain or a backpack or wherever. We made, I made one and then we made one together, so there's the two of them. I don't remember where I was in all of this last week. I think I just had the fabric part done. So I finished all of the cards and I made the envelopes and put the linings in and got everything ready to go. So these are ready to go. Some of them will go into the shop and some of them will go into my personal stash for my thank you notes. And I'm sure I'm just gonna go ahead and make more in the future anyways, especially with the holidays coming up. I'd like to have some holiday themed ones coming. So that was a nice, fun little afternoon working on these. I just love having a simple white envelope or a lightly colored one and having that pop of paper when you open it up. And if you're getting these from me as a thank you, you know what it's gonna look like. You know you're gonna get some scrap fabrics and an envelope and all that, but you really never know what fabrics I might have used. And that little pop of color, it's just a nice surprise because it's all different similar as it's all like small pattern basically but this time I took them out of the book in like color order it's not a rainbow or anything it's just the way they had them ordered up in the book and it was just fun to go ahead and use them that way now some of course I could pay a little bit more attention to they do have some it's not all directional but like this half went one way and this half down here went the other I could have paid a little bit more attention to it but I don't mind that these are a little bit off in the top they're just scrappy little cards anyway, so I think it's okay to have the pattern that goes on the diagonal and not be perfect. Because we all know that I'm not going to be making it perfect, and some of them, I just get that corner a little bit wrong and have to fix it with my fingernail. Just the way it folds down here and where it folds at. So these are 18, and I think I sent out three or four of them out of this ones that I made for little thank you notes. The other thing I finished was all of my little needle books here. Now I mailed them flat so that they can go for the price of a stamp because they're not heavy at all and they're super thin. If I were to fold them like they're supposed to be, then that's going to be more than the quarter inch and it's going to make it more expensive to send. And I have to use a large envelope for such a small little thing because if I put it in anything small, it would just end up getting lost. I guess I could put it in a regular envelope and just put extra stamps on it, but it's just so much easier to send it this way. I am sending these out to my patrons. They've already seen these over on the Patreon channel. So when you guys get them, if you want, you can take them like this and give them a nice good steam press and it will set it to make it look like a book on the side here. See how it's got the two lines of stitching so it folds it and makes it look like the binding on a book? Or you can just go ahead and leave it like this. Once you start using it and putting it in your bag and stuff like that, or you can just set it underneath a regular book and it'll go ahead and form its shape. The ones I've done before that I haven't mailed out anywhere, once I give them a good press, they just sit like this. Even look, just by hand, they just sit nicely. So even if you don't want to, just go ahead and match up the sides, run your fingers down it a little bit and you'll be good to go. Now I have extras here also that I'm going to be putting into the shop. I'm gonna list these as the thing where you're just saying you want a needle book and you're just gonna get whichever one I happen to have on hand because they're all a variety of them. I'll try to save out different ones so like I don't have all of the same in the shop. And I'll put a picture up. So if there's one you really, really want, you can ask in the comments for it, but I may or may not have it. But if you really, really want it, I could go ahead and make it for you. You know how it is. I don't mind making things. Our fire doesn't make it easy. Like on Etsy, you can go ahead and have a drop down menu and say Bluebird, Elephant, and stuff like that. But on Art Fire, you just get the option of saying, this is what I have. So if I wanted to have them all individual, I have to each list each one individually. And that just kind of clutters up the shop. So for things that are like this, I like to just go ahead and say I have 10 of these or something like that. And then you can just say how many you want. So for my patrons, these are going to be going in the mail on Tuesday. Today is Wednesday when you're watching this, so it should have gone in the mail yesterday. So for those of you overseas, you'll know that something's coming and 
you're going to be aware that it does take a little bit of time right now to ship overseas. I just received a postcard last week. I'm going to be showing you in a second from Russia and it was mailed out before Easter. So the international travel is still a bit long right now. I started the Home Sweet Home Felt Works applique funky folk folk art kit. I don't know. I guess it's just like a little banner. It's called Sweetest Home. I don't know why they call it Sweetest Home when they should just call it Home Sweet Home because that's what it says on there, right? So I went ahead and got the words all stitched down. So the next thing will be to be cutting them all out and getting them all attached to whatever the little, I know it's not a beehive, the little honeycomb thing there that they live in. Now I thought I'd finished this mitt because I was putting a thumb on the other day and I thought I completely finished it, but I think I have to measure it and I might just need to do one more row or I'm at the point where I'm casting off. I probably went to bed thinking, well, I'll go ahead and finish this the next day and I didn't pick it back up. So this one is almost done and then I'm just gonna be weaving in the ends because when you're doing knitting and mitts and stuff, you get like little, you see like it's not a hole, but it's a little space from where you pick up the stitches and things like that. So I'm just gonna go and weave in the ends and tidy that all up. You probably won't see these again until I finish the red ones because they're all gonna ship out together. Remember this is the purple that I'm gonna be using for the dragon. So as soon as I get this off, I can finish working on the dragon. Well, speaking of the dragon, I got the body done. He looks like a snake because he's got the nose and the green eyes. I think it might be a she, I don't know. It's Robbie's friend's D&D &D dragon, so I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. I, for one reason, I think it's gonna be a girl. But the body's done. I need to put the purple spikes with that sparkly yarn all the way down through here. And then I'm gonna do the entire wings. The wings are supposed to be black or main color of the dragon, and then just the contrasting color on the tips. I'm gonna do the whole the whole bit of the wings in the black, um, no, the purple and the sparkly purple held together so that the wings will be nice and sparkly for her. I'm pretty sure it doesn't have legs or anything. And if it does, I'm not doing them anyway, because I kind of like the dragons where they can just lay down like this and not have any legs to try to hold them up. I don't remember seeing any. I do have the ears done and then there's horns. So those are done. I just don't know where I'm going to place everything. I guess the ears are going to go off to the side a little and the horns up here. We'll see. But it is just a strange looking thing. It's kind of like a snake that ate something and hasn't digested it yet. So I'm hoping to get that dragon finished this week or at least pretty darn close. So let me show you what I did get in the mail this week. Here's the postcard that I mentioned from Russia. I really think this is kind of cute. So it's just a piece of fabric that she appliqued down onto a background fabric and then added this nice piece of lace to it. I thought that was really kind of cute to add the lace. I've saved a lot of different ribbons and lace and stuff like that to do something like this, but I didn't have anything that's wide and I think it looks really nice with the nice wide ribbon. Um, lace, sorry. So this one came all the way from Russia. As I said, I just got it this week and it was mailed out before Easter, so that's kind of fun. It was definitely a surprise. It's been so long now and so much is, it's not like it's, what well, do you figure, April, May, June, July. It's been three months. So it's enough time that's passed that I completely forgot about them. I didn't know how many I've received or not. So it was a really nice surprise to open up the mailbox and find this in it. I also received this fun purple one from a friend. I thought that was really nice to receive. I, you guys know I love purple. And I like that it has all the different shades. And this one looks like it's even a batik in there. So this is what I've been working on this week. What have you guys been working on? I started looking this weekend for some fun table runners and mini wall hangings for the different holidays coming up. I was thinking to start with something for the fall or Thanksgiving and then work into Halloween and Christmas. And yeah, I got lost on Pinterest. I think I spent about an hour just wandering around and looking at different things. And it's really kind of fun because a lot of times it might just be a patchwork project, right? So you could have that same table runner or wall hanging and just change out the fabric and you can have all of your holidays done in one simple pattern. So I thought that was kind of a fun idea for someone who just wants to have something and not really make something in depth. Then I started looking at the fancier designs and then the appliques and yeah, I went down that rabbit hole and I got lost. 
good thing it was like at the end of the day so i was limited to the amount of time i had on pinterest because after a bit the animals started crying for dinner and i had to walk away otherwise i could have been there all night I was chatting with my patrons over the weekend and I think what I want to do is over on my Patreon channel, I want to go ahead and do a quilt along with them. You know, we're going to go ahead and choose some different patterns and vote on them. As always in my Patreon group, it's the majority wins. So what everyone votes on, that's the project we're going to make. So then I thought it would be fun also is to come over here on YouTube and we can also do some type of a project like that and do some type of quilt along. Now it's July is pretty much over there's only a couple days left so I didn't get coordinated enough to even do a Christmas in July because mostly I wasn't in the mood I didn't have the brain waves and the power to really get into the Christmas spirit which is what I like to do when I do Christmas in July I don't want to just make something you know I just I want to put on Christmas music I want to have twinkle lights up and I just want to enjoy that feeling halfway through the year because I love the Christmas season. I love the lights and the music and all the colors. I'm sure you're not surprised that that's kind of something that I enjoy. I also love Halloween. Once again, you got the colors and the lights and I don't do scary. So I like the silly fun Halloween stuff. Yeah, I've never really been into the scary stuff. But anyway, I want to go ahead and do something over here on YouTube also where we can kind of do a quilt along. Even if it takes us more than one day, we can go ahead and, you know, every Friday we can go ahead and work on it. Or, I don't know, I'll figure something out. But so I'm going to go over to Patreon and we're going to go ahead and vote on some things over there. And then I'm going to bring some over here and maybe we'll vote here or we'll... YouTube has taken the uh, poll thing away, but we can always leave comments and you guys can help me choose which one we want to work on over here on YouTube. Because right now I have about 30 options, so I need to narrow that down a bit. I have a few that I want to make just myself to have fun, and I have a bunch that I think would work great in a group project, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Sometimes when you're an advanced quilter, you just want to make something quick and simple just to have a project done. It doesn't always have to be complicated, right? So I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!